Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rise Up. My name is Shane Tapia. This is my beautiful wife, Jennifer. And we're going to open up in some worship right now, and we're going to praise the Lord. So if you would just join us as we join the rest of the worship in the world unto our Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we approach your throne with thanksgiving and praise. Oh, Jesus, thank you. At times I get discouraged, thinking God forgot my name. And I wonder what's my purpose, but doubt brings so much shame. Could I part the seas like Moses? Conquer giants with just a stone. Am I worthy of his grace? Will he ever call me home? Then I heard my Jesus sing out. He's the way, the truth, and life. My God can do all things. For he made the sacrifice. I am Elijah. I am a fire. Just a man, God used him for his glory through his brokenness. And God is fighting for us, whoever calls upon his name, for he qualifies the call and loves us each the same. Then I heard my Jesus sing out, he's the way, the truth, and life. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus, that we rely only on you, Father. Shake my world, shake it all, till I'm unshakable. Show me everything that I must let go. I surrender, take it all, till I'm unshakable. Show me everything that I must let go. Oh, oh speak to me, Lord. Shake my world, shake it all, till I'm unshakable. Show me everything that I must let go I surrender take it all till I'm unshakable show me everything that I must let go and tie me to the altar don't let me get away bind me to your presence do what you need to do in me Seek my heart, remove all that doesn't honor you. Tie me to the altar. Tie me to the altar. Tie me to the altar. Shake my world, shake. Till I'm unshakable, show me everything that I must let go. I surrender, take it all. Till I'm unshakable, show me everything that I must let go. And tie me to the altar, don't let me get away. Bind me to your presence. Do what you need to do in me. Seek my heart, remove all that doesn't honor you. Tie me to the altar. me in the fire, burn every useless desire, set a fire, set a fire, break my spirit open, Father, baptize me in the fire, burn every useless desire, set a fire, 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 set a fire to what's unholy, set a fire.
God, we just thank you that we can sit in your presence and we can ask you to tie us unto your altar. Remove all things that are not of you inside of us out, God. Rid us of all things that are not pleasing and holy into your sight, God. Let us be perfectly yours in all ways, God. As we begin for the word to come forth, God, I give you praise. I thank you that your word is going to come forth today. And I pray that nothing of the flesh would come forth, but only your spirit and your spirit alone, God. I thank you for all that you do for us, God. And I pray that your blood would be over this mic, would be over everything that happens today, Father. So we praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. up my brother so today we are gonna have Lorenzo Bernetti my brother man of God and God has called him to give a word today so I'm gonna leave the floor into him let's bow our heads in prayer quickly Lord God we thank you right now we thank you for your precious spirit we thank you for your presence do what only you can do there is only one with the power to actually perform the will of God. And this is you and you alone. We thank you right now for accomplishing this. Amen. God brought me here today to tell you that the word is reformation. The word is reformation. Just in December, God gave me a word and he told me that this is the year. 2018 is the year of the manifestation of the sons of God. And just in February, Billy Graham passed away and went home to be with the Lord. Now, that's significant because for the last 20 years, that is, it's been prophesied that the next move of God will be markered by the death of Billy Graham and the passing of Billy Graham. Now, that next move has been called many things. It's been called a new wave of God or the next big move of God or the, the greatest revival we've ever seen. But God wants you to know that it's not a revival. It is the last reformation. Now, the reason why that's so important is the word revival is continued to be, be ha, has been thrown around in the mouths of many pastors and leaders right now in this time. And it is an off word. The word is reformation. The word is not revival. Revival means to bring something back alive again. Revival denotes something that was once alive that has died and now is going to get life again. But God wants you to know that what's been going on that has died, this dead church, he is not bringing back alive. He never gave life to it in the first place. This was a, a, a product of man's doing. But God is bringing reformation. To reform means to, means, means to, means to, uh, 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 reformation means to reform and restructure. And God's going to do that and bring us back to the original intent of what his church and his body should look like. God gave me a word from Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 1, verse 10, it says, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. This right here is the word of reformation, and this is why this word is not a popular word. Revival is more easily digested than the word of reformation because when a reformation happens, what is going on is things are being rooted out and pulled down. They're being destroyed and pulled down, and then God comes and plants his kingdom and builds and grows his kingdom. See, the church as it's been, is not the church that it ought to be. This is why reformation is necessary. Because everything that's been going on is not of God. It's a product of man. The church has been in a condition 
between, in the Old Testament, if you look, there's a time between Jacob and Moses. And the church is in that time. If you study it at the end of Genesis when you get a chance, if you study it, what happens is Jacob passes on to his sons the promise of God, but never passes on relationship. And so what happens is, is his sons and the rest of the people of God, the tribes of Israel, they prosper for a season. But then after the season is over, they get brought into captivity, into bondage for 450 years. Now, why is that significant? Because we have been in that place. What's been passed down from the prior generation that we've experienced and we've been a product of is that, that, that place of promise but no presence. They have passed on the promise and the blessing of God, and it's prospered for a season. But because there has been no relationship, there has been no presence of God. When there is no presence, there's no power. And this is why we haven't seen the miraculous on the scale that we ought to. This is why people haven't gotten salvation and and real transformation and real deliverance. This is why people and houses are lacking God. If you go into houses, not only just across this nation, but across the world, you will see that these houses are lacking God. This needs to change. See, the difference between Jacob and Moses, Jacob gets passed down God from his father, Isaac. Well, he rather steals it, but it's passed down anyways. And Jacob has a spirit on him that can't pass God to anyone. He passes on the promise. But one thing that's interesting about Moses that's never spoken of or rarely spoken of is that Moses grows up in Egyptian culture, then gets pulled out and brought into the desert by God and raised up on the presence of God alone. Moses never knew religion. Moses didn't know uh, 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 the, the culture and the, and, the, and, the, and the fundamentals and the structure of Judaism. He didn't grow up like that. He grew up in the, in, in the desert. He grew up in the wilderness off the presence of God alone. And this is what God has done with this generation. This generation, these generation of leaders, these leaders that God has raised up in this time that is defying religion and saying no to religion and no to structure, he has raised this generation up on his presence alone. And this is the generation that's going to produce reformation. Re reformation is going to be produced out of this generation. We are going to see God's spirit and his power and his presence like never before. Let me explain Reformation for a second and what is going to happen. When God brings Reformation, and it's already here, the leaders are manifesting now, and we are going to soon see the full manifestation of it. But what is going to happen, our individuals are going to be carrying God. They're going to be as they ought to be. They are going to be individuals and people who are true vessels, true vessels now. Not just individuals with Bibles and who go to church and can take you to church, but vessels who are actual temples of the spirit of the living God. These vessels are going to be housing the abiding presence of God. They don't have to take you anywhere. They're going to be bringing God to you in the marketplace, anywhere, at the gas station, at the Target. Wherever they are, God is going to begin to move because these individuals are housing the presence of God. Their presence has become God's presence because they have gone through their process. It's a process to get to that. See, religion, it, 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 it brings you through a bunch of fundamentals to bring you to a place where, where you get to the end of it and there's nothing there but the fundamentals that you've practiced. But see, this process with God is going to give you deliverance. It is going to give you transformation. If you let God, if you really let God purge you, and if you really submit to him, what God is going to do is he is going to make your body a vessel for his presence. He is going to abide there. He is going to live with you. This is why Paul says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost where the spirit of God dwells? And when he's saying that, he is speaking as God. See, God speaks things that are not as though they are. So a lot of us think that God is dwelling with us because that's what the Bible says. 
But I want to challenge you today and tell you that there is an evidence that God is dwelling with you. And the evidence is that everywhere you go, everywhere you are, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, God is there. If his presence isn't there, there's an abiding problem. I just want to tell you today that it is possible. There's someone on the other side of this camera. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There is someone that doesn't think this is possible. God has revealed this to you, and you don't think it's possible. You don't think deliverance and transformation actually exists. You don't think you can be made perfect, and the Spirit of God can actually live on the inside of you. But I came to tell you today that it is possible, and God is doing it. There is a supernatural window right now in the Spirit for supernatural transformations, transformations that surpass process. This is what God is doing now in this hour. And if you are watching this, I'm telling you that you are called to the Reformation. You are called to be a part of this reformed team. There is a team of reformers, a team of leaders, a team of individuals that, that God is going to use to tear down religion, tear down religious structure, tear down, tear down these organizations that present you with, 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 with a, an idol of God, but never get you to the actual thing. But God is real, and you can have him for yourself. And I want you to know this this day, that this is what God is doing. Praise his holy name. God, I thank you right now. I thank you for every life that's watching this broadcast right now. Lord, I thank you for any, every man, woman, boy, and girl that's watching this right now. I thank you that the Reformation anointing is going through this camera, hitting living rooms, hitting places right now. Lift your hands and receive God right now. He is moving right now. There is an anointing here for God to rebuke religion out of your vessel. There is an anointing here right now for God to purge you of everything that's been holding you back. There is an anointing here right now, and it's real and it's tangible. Lift your hands and receive it right now. The anointing is here. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is here. You have to understand that we, as, a, as the people of God, are coming into our promised land. And he is our promise. He is our portion. His presence is our promise. He is going to lead us into this promised land by his presence to show us that our life needs to be sustained and led by his presence and his spirit alone. This is what we have not been preached to. This is what we have not been taught. That it is his spirit and his presence that matters above all. And before we're going to see the full magnitude or the zenith of this move of God, of this reformation, what's going to have to happen, our individuals are going to have to place the importance back on the Holy Ghost. What I've noticed throughout history, every big move of God, the importance was placed back on the Holy Ghost before anyone saw the full manifestation of the thing. The importance has to get placed back on the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is one of the most disrespected, disregarded, unappreciated members of the Trinity. But he is just as vital and just as important. And right now, if you, wherever you are, you just lift your hands and begin to cry out to the Holy Spirit. Tell him to fall on you afresh. Tell him to penetrate your soul. Tell him to move on you right now, deliver you, set you free, give you life by his very spirit. You do it right now. Hallelujah. You do it right now. God, I thank you. You do it right now. Jennifer, can you sing something? You do it right now. You do it right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, you do Father. it right now. You thank you, right Father. Now. Fall afresh on us, Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit purge our souls. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. It's so great, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Holy yes, Spirit, Lord. we need you. Yes, Lord. Only you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can have him for yourself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise Thank you, you right now. 
We praise you right Thank now. You, receive, receive the spirit of the living Thank God. You, receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Receive him right now. Thank you, Lord. Receive. Hey. Open up my heart, Jesus, because you are holy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we need you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Father, I pray, I pray that that word that went forth would sink into the hearts of everybody that listened to it, Father. Let them know that it's time to give everything unto the Father, to give all of yourselves, everything that you have, your choices, your desires, everything you can possibly want, give it unto the Father. It's time, because God is ready to make his move. God is ready to make his move. And are you willing to be used by him or not? Thank you, Lord. I don't want to miss out on the Father, and I know you don't want to miss out on the Father. So you take that choice and that decision, and you make it between God and yourself. You, Lorenzo, would you please close us out in prayer? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, we just thank you right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your reformation, Lord. We thank you for it. Holy Spirit, thank you for meeting us today in this place. You said you would, and you did just that. We thank you so much for it. We thank you for your spirit and your presence. We thank you for making a difference. Deliver, make free, transform, heal. We thank you right now. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. We give you all the honor and the glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.